I want to begin by saying good evening to everyone and uh, for our reference point tonight, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through verse number 3. Uh, we are continuing a series of connected messages uh, revolving around the overarching theme of living uh, like we know who our Father is. And recently we had been considering a short series within this series under the subtopic of old habits die hard. Uh, because uh, living like uh, God is our father requires that we change. And we acknowledge that it does us no good to read and to study the Bible and then be unchanged. And we indicated that old habits die hard, uh, but die they must. And if we're going to truly be the people that God would have us to be, uh, then God calls us uh, to change. Uh, being a Christian and living like one uh, is two different things. Uh, obedience to the gospel of Christ or the doctrine of Christ simply puts us in a relationship with the Father. But then comes the hard part, because then we have to live uh, like we know who our Father is. And I will uh, continue to state and continue to say that uh, living the Christian life uh, is not easy. Uh, it's not easy. And any, any word that is designed to make you uncomfortable, uh, any word that is designed to prick and to touch your heart uh, is designed to upset you where you are. And, and living the Christian life, really, uh, loving your enemies, uh, loving your neighbors as yourself, living the Christian life is not easy. Uh, and I've said that if you, if you think it's easy, then there's, really, there's a really good chance that uh, you and I may not have been or may not be living it right. And if we can't get it right as the Lord's church and, and shame the devil by telling the truth, well, we haven't always gotten it right in the church. Uh, if we can't get it right as the Lord's church, then how do we expect the world uh, to be any different? And with that in mind, again, I want to go back to uh, Paul's first letter to the Church of Christ that met in Corinth, because if there was ever a place where Christians struggled to live the Christian life, uh, where Christians struggled to live like they knew uh, who their father was, uh, then Corinth was that place. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse number 1 and concluding in verse number 3. And for clarity and understanding, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And if you have the Bible, you will find these words. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk not solid food, for you are not ready for it. And even now, you are not ready, not yet ready, rather, uh, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? Uh, this evening, I want to use for a devotional subject, adult in our appearance, but a child in our conduct, adult in our appearance, but a child in our conduct. Uh, previously, we indicated that Paul's motivation for writing uh, this particular epistle or this particular letter, that it revolved around things that he had heard about the church and questions that had been addressed to him. Uh, the word on the street was that there was division, that there was jealousy and strife, and that there was sexual immorality among the Corinthian church. And I pointed out before that it was interesting that before Paul addressed the immorality, or what we might consider the most serious sin, that before he addressed the immorality, he first addressed the division. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through uh, chapter 4, uh, Paul is still dealing with the issue of division as some members in Corinth were dividing themselves in factions uh, in the name of Paul, Apollos, and uh, Peter. And in that regard, Paul asked the question in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse number 13, he said, is Christ divided? Uh, and then in the latter part of chapter 2, he talks about the difference between those who are spiritually mature 
and those who are spiritually immature. He says that uh, the natural man, or, or in this case, uh, it could be the natural woman, as this is inclusive of humankind as, or mankind as a whole, uh, that the natural or carnal man, uh, because they are still being led by the worldly or by their worldly or fleshly nature, that they have a difficult time understanding and ultimately applying God's spiritual truths. Uh, whereas the spiritual man, or, or those who allow the spirit to lead them, uh, they are able to apply God's truth. And then this becomes evident in how they live. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 14, uh, that's why Paul says that the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And then that sets us up for uh, chapter three, where Paul goes on to say, but I, brothers, uh, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants, in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? And oftentimes when we consider uh, these verses, we approach it from the standpoint of a person being a babe in Christ, uh, based on how long they have been a Christian or, or how well they understand the doctrine of Christ. But Paul isn't really referring to how well they understand the doctrine, but rather their ability to apply that doctrine. Uh, he had given them the basic doctrine, that was the milk. He had covered the unity associated with the, the one Lord, the one faith, and the one baptism in Ephesians chapter four. But, but Paul recognized that he couldn't give them greater spiritual truths because their behavior indicated that they weren't ready to receive greater truths because they were still struggling with the application of the basics. Uh, although they were adults in appearance physically, they were children in conduct spiritually. The fact that there was sexual immorality, the fact that there was division and jealousy and strife among them was an indicator that they were more carnal than they were spiritual. Uh, in Galatians 5, uh, you recall that Paul admonishes the, the Church of Christ that met in Galatia to, to let the Spirit guide them so they could be more spiritual than carnal. In Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse number 16, uh, Paul writes, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Uh, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Watch it. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, and that key word, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And then Paul says, I warn you as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, they were babes in Christ, not because of how well they understood the basic doctrine, but rather how well they applied that doctrine. And even today, uh, I indicated last time that uh, we seemingly have mastered the doctrine of Christianity, but oftentimes fail uh, in its practice. Uh, we preach one church, but fail to practice one church. 
Um, see, some places you go, you know, not here. Uh, we, we've had the pleasure of, of being members of a number of congregations in a number of states across in a number of cities. But uh, in some places you go, there are churches of Christ within two or three miles of each other. And it's not because there's a need to have two congregations that close together, but it's because brothers and sisters in Christ can't seem to get along. And somewhere I hear Jesus saying that they will know you. They will know you are my disciples by the love that you have one for another. We preach unity, but oftentimes fail to practice unity. Um, knowing and understanding the doctrine that you as a husband are to love your wife as Christ loved the church, just knowing that doctrine isn't a sign that you are mature, but rather the actual demonstration and application of that love is what makes you mature. See, ladies, if you're married to a Christian, you ought to be the happy. You ought to be the happiest lady, the happiest wife in this world because you have a husband who will apply God's word and will love you the way Christ loved the church. It's the application that makes you mature. And I could say the same for wives and submitting to your own husbands as unto the Lord. And, and I could say the same to children and obeying your parents. Uh, it, it's one thing to know the doctrine, but it's another thing altogether to be able to apply that doctrine. And the application is what really determines where we are spiritually. Uh, we have seemingly mastered the doctrine of Christianity, but oftentimes we fail uh, in its practice. Uh, because of our doctrinal knowledge, we are adults in appearance, but our application sometimes would suggest that we are but children in our conduct. Uh, in Romans 8 and verse number 14, uh, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When we allow the Spirit to guide us, then and only then can we live like we know who our Father is. Uh, being a Christian and living like one is, is two different things. Obedience to the gospel of Christ simply puts us in a relationship with the Father, but then comes it comes the hard part because then we have to live like we know who our father is. And if we can't get this thing right in the Lord's church, then how can we talk about the world? If we can't get it right in the Lord's church, then how do we expect the world to do any better? Uh, if you're listening tonight, uh, and if you have yet to, to obey the gospel, uh, we would ask that you please contact us that we might assist you uh, in your obedience to the, to the gospel of Christ. Uh, we acknowledge that all have sinned and we ourselves also fall short. And so we want to assist you in obedience uh, so that you may do what you would have to do to have uh, God forgive you of your past sin. Or if you have prayer requests, we want you to make that known as well. Uh, as we sing the selected song. And at this time, I just want to thank everyone for listening and may God continue to bless us all in a mighty way. Thank you so much. <laughs>